Hi everybody, welcome to Sony IS and again welcome back to the Environment High Yielding Topic Series for Prelims 2023. In this series, what I've done, I'll be covering all the important conventions, okay? So, this will be done in two parts. In convention part one, I'll be outlining all the important conventions and in convention part two, we will be covering COP27, okay, which is a very important topic for this year's exam. Okay, so one by one, we'll see all the important conventions and in this particular part one, at the end, I will revise all these conventions in one particular slide. Okay, so that your revision also becomes handy. And those of you who have problems in remembering conventions, what they are, they will find this lecture useful. So please see it to the very end. Okay, now in conventions, I'm starting firstly with the Rio summit of 1992. Okay, so this summit led to, I'll just outline what all things happened here. First of all, this led to Agenda 21. Okay. Here, it led to three conventions. Okay. The conventions include United Nations Convention, Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC. Then you have UNCCD. United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification and you have United Nations Convention on Biodiversity. Alright. Agenda 21 simply means these were the principles for 21st century related to sustainable development. Alright. So Rio Summit is very important like uh, often in the news for Agenda 21 and how far have we accomplished those principles but more importantly for this particular chapter we are concerned with the conventions. Now many of you have heard this term COP. COP simply means conference of parties okay and oftentimes this word gets thrown up right even in the very starting I said COP 27 but your mind should ask of what okay. So this is UNFCCC. So when I'm saying COP27, which was the most recent one, which happened in Sharm Al Sheikh, Egypt, this is I'm referring to UNFCCC. In UNCCD, the most recent is COP15. This happened in Abdijan, which is in Africa. In CBD also you had COP15, but don't get confused. This happened in two places. One, Kunming. Kunming is in China, so it happened virtually in China and in Montreal. So you might also get a term known as Kunming Montreal Biodiversity Framework is related to. So yes, that is COP15. All right. So that is one thing you need to understand with respect to this. All right. And I'll be telling you subsequent things as I move along the chapter. But the most important thing right now is things related to climate change is COP27 and the part two of this lecture is totally focused on COP27. All the initiatives will be covered in that. Okay. In fact, most of you are aware of, let's say, Kyoto Protocol or let's say Paris Agreement. Okay. So, Kyoto Protocol is actually COP3. And let's say if the statement says Kyoto Protocol is COP3 of UNCCD, no. It is COP3 of UNFCCC. Similarly, Paris Agreement, that is COP21. Okay, this was in 2015. So this is how you have just, I'm emphasizing this a lot because many of the students get confused in this basic part as well. So UNFCCC is different. UNCCC, uh, UNCCD is different. This talks about desertification, land degradation, etc. And then you have UNCBD. Similarly, when I in this lecture, I'll tell you Basel Convention, Rotterdam, Stockholm, right? We'll discuss Mina Mata, etc. All of them have different COPs. Okay. And COP is simply a conference of parties. It can be annual or depending on how the parties want to meet. All right. So first part is this. So I'll just outline a few other things. 15th COP, I told you this also happened in CCD. This happened in Abdijan. That is one thing you need to know. Okay. Second, here you read about and by the way, Abdijan is in Cote d'Ivoire, which is in Africa. Okay. So that is one thing you need to know. Then this led to Abid Jan declaration. Okay. 
दिस ऑल्सो लेड टू बिजनेस फॉर लैंड ओके बिजनेस फॉर लैंड इज सिंपल दिस बिजनेस फॉर लैंड इनिशिएटिव टॉक्स अबाउट हाउ द प्राइवेट प्लेयर्स कैन मेक देयर रोल इन सस्टेनेबल मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द लैंड ऑल राइट सो अब्डी जॉन डिक्लेरेशन रिलेटेड टू सी सी डी बिजनेस फॉर लैंड अगेन रिलेटेड टू सी सी डी हियर अवर ऑनरेबल एनवायरमेंट मिनिस्टर अगेन रीइटरेटेड इंडिया टारगेट फॉर बॉन चैलेंज आई एम सेंग दिस इज बॉन चैलेंज इन द सब्सिक्वेंट स्लाइड आई टेल यू बॉन कन्वेंशन दैट इज डिफरेंट बॉन कन्वेंशन is related to migratory species this is bond challenge in this you need to know two things one who led it second what are the targets so both things i'll tell you right now bond challenge first of all is related to restoration of the degraded land okay so let's say if we lost 10 hectares of land due to deforestation and if we plant 10 uh, sorry trees in that 10 hectare of land or in other so 10 minus 10 that is known as zero that concept is known as land degradation neutrality okay the same thing is also spoken about by bond challenge it talks about restoration of degraded land okay so if you get a term what is ldn land degradation neutrality you know the concept now that the land which you have wasted versus the land which you have reclaimed okay that is known as land degradation neutrality okay so bond challenge i told you first question who led it okay so it was led by iucn plus german government iucn and german government led to this okay second the targets so the most updated targets i'll tell you otherwise you have seen different targets in different books they are not that updated right now target is 2030 the year is 2030 target for india is 26 million hectare land okay this was spoken by the honorable environment environment minister here as well okay indian target is 26 million hectares and the target for world global target is 350 i'm again reiterating the target for india is 26 million hectares land by 2030 and the target for the world is 350 million hectares by 2030 please keep these things in mind we are discussing the 15th cop to uncd nothing very substantial happened here apart from just an abdi uh, this abidjan declaration and the business for land initiative and again our commitment in the bond challenge was reiterated all right then there was a 15th cop to uncbd all right now before i tell you i'll just tell you that uncbd first of all india is a signatory to uncbd that's one and because of that we also have this biological diversity act of 2002 okay we have covered this in the high yielding topics as well all right in case you are watching this lecture for the first time please go back and see i have also spoken about the amendments to the biodiversity amendment bill 2021 and i have also spoken about biodiversity heritage sites okay additionally when you read about cbd you also read about one is cartagena protocol okay and the second is nagoya protocol fine so what is cartagena protocol basically cartagena protocol you can just write down a keyword cartagena protocol is related to the bio safety okay bio safety of lmo living modified organisms and gmo gmo is genetically modified organisms so cartagena protocol talks about bio safety of living modified organisms and genetically modified organisms second nagoya nagoya protocol talks about access and benefit sharing okay access and benefit sharing it talks about preventing bio piracy okay what is access and benefit sharing that whatever knowledge or whatever traditional knowledge we are using let's say from the forests or from other ecosystems we will share the benefits we will also share the access with the traditional communities otherwise what used to happen that big mnc's used to come they used to take the knowledge from the tri tribals they used to prepare products okay and they used to get all the revenues and benefits but they did not share those revenues that term is known as biopiracy 
to prevent that you have nagoya protocol so cartagena protocol nagoya protocol that is something you need to know and biodiversity act of 2002 please go back and see the lecture on biodiversity act as well already been covered few things again i'll tell you about the 15th cop what all has happened right so there is uh, uh one second there is a 30 by 30 target which it speaks about 30 by 30 which means co combined land and sea i will save 30% of that by the year 2030 this also has the year 2030 we also saw the year 2030 in the bond challenge all right that's one second it talks about a kunming biodiversity fund okay so it talks about more investments in the biodiversity and overall it talks about 500 billion dollars per year to be invested okay this talks about an investment of 500 billion dollars per year in the biodiversity right it also sp speaks about increasing role of the private sector in all of this right and more scientific approach for the management of biodiversity all right so just recapping few things for you kunming biodiversity fund kunming montreal biodiversity like framework 30 by 30 target increased participation and more scientific approach by the private sector overall is what is spoken about by the 15th cop of cbd okay so that is one thing again that you need to know all right fine now i'll move on to the next part here i've already told you unf triple c this part i will be covering separately in the part 2 and that to cop 27 everything related to cop 27 we will discuss because this is again a very important topic all right then moving on other set of conventions again very famous conventions are these brs conventions okay b is for basel s uh, sorry r is for rotterdam and s is for stockholm so what you should do make a small table okay like this b r and s i'll tell you how should you make your notes here first of all what these are about some basic detail and the update on the most recent cop you should write down okay so make your notes like this okay and by the way earlier these cops used to happen differently in 2019 there was a triple cop which happened for the first time so all these conventions had a like a single cop and again in 2022 this cop happened in geneva combined all right so this was the cop i'm telling to you this was the one which had happened here in geneva switzerland all right So let us again go back and see what has happened here. B R S number one is Basel. So Basel talks about transboundary movement of hazardous waste. So in your notes, transboundary movement of hazardous waste number one with respect to Basel. Second, this does not include radioactive substances. So radioactive and put across. This does not include radioactive substances. So it talks about trans uh, trans boundary movement of hazardous waste one, but this does not include radioactive waste. This is the static component of it. All right. Then second is Rotterdam Convention. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Rotterdam Convention basically talks about hazardous chemicals. Okay. And pesticides. so don't get don't get confused this is hazardous waste this is hazardous chemicals and pesticides another thing which you need to know here i just change the color of the pen so that you can see better yeah this talks about prior informed consent rotterdam this term prior informed consent now what does that mean prior informed consent simply means let's say if a country a is exporting a hazardous let's say chemical to country b it will have proper labeling it will tell how to utilize it how to dispose it all the related details with respect to that chemical should be properly displayed outlined right so that the country which is receiving it knows exactly how to tackle otherwise without that relevant information it will become very dangerous to store it to utilize it so all these things are covered in prior informed consent okay and s is for stockholm okay stockholm convention okay so for example this is your stockholm convention it deals with pop 
वॉट इज पीओपी परसिस्टेंट ऑर्गेनिक पल्यूटेंट ओके वॉट डज परसिस्टेंट मीन समथिंग विच विल बी देयर इन द एटमोस्फियर इन द एनवायरमेंट फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम ओके नाउ इफ समथिंग इज फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम इट ऑल्सो मीन्स इट इज रेजिस्टेंट टू माइक टू द डिग्रेडेशन और टू द माइक्रोबियल एक्शन ओके सो दैट इज वाई इट इज गोइंग टू स्टे इन द एटमोस्फियर फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम ऑल राइट ऑर्गेनिक विच मीन्स इट विल बी अ डेरिवेटिव ऑफ सम कार्बन और कार्बन रिलेटेड कंपाउंड सो दैट इज परसिस्टेंट ऑर्गेनिक पल्यूटेंट नंबर वन नाउ सम प्रोमिनेंट एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ पीओपीज इंक्लूड फॉर एग्जाम्पल डी डी टी डाई क्लोरो सॉरी डाई क्लोरो डाइफिनाइल ट्राई क्लोरो इथेन ओके नॉट जस्ट दैट अपार्ट फ्रॉम डी डी टी यू हैव एल्ड्रिंस ओके यू हैव सम फ्यूरस you have di aldrins okay and collectively a term was known as dirty dozen okay this i have also explained to you in terms dirty dozen were those 12 very harmful persistent organic pollutants okay that were and see one of the threats with this is that they have a tendency to bio magnify so from one chain to the other chain this is going to happen which is why see ddt was a very cheap insecticide all right and with ddt what used to happen that let's say it was eaten up or let's say it went to the aquatic ecosystems from that finally to human food chain so it used to impact multiple trophic levels right which is why it was added here and then steps were taken to properly ban it okay so that is something again you need to know and i've also added and by the way more than 12 now it is around more than 24 pop pops we had so initially this collective term was also used dirty dozen to signify them all right so it includes aldrin chlordane ddt endrin heptachlor is also used by the way heptachlor was also mentioned in one of the questions of upsc right uh, uh, in that heptachlor was mentioned again it is like a insecticide only okay you have hexa chlorobenzene you have pcbs pcbs ddt etc are very harmful in the aquatic eco ecosystems okay then you have chlorinated dioxins and chlorinated furans these are some of the names so let's say if they give these names combined and they ask you what are these so you should know these are persistent organic pollutants all right now just one thing i have to add here what has been the update in one slide i have consolidated consolidated the update of 2022 okay so one by one i'll tell you the first update is for basel convention okay so what has happened in the basel convention it has outlined e wastes okay now the e waste can be hazardous or not hazardous all the e wastes have been outlined here and they will be subject to a prior informed consent okay earlier we saw that in rotterdam you have prior informed consent but now prior informed consent has been added for the e waste this happened in the 15th cop now please i am telling you don't remember the cop number of each of them you will get confused here but yes cop number for the un cbd fcc you should know second this is the 15th cop in the 14th cop what they had done they had added plastic wastes and they had subject plastic waste to pic now in the 15th what they, they have done all the e waste whether it is hazardous or not hazardous will be subjected to prior informed consent okay so this is what you should write down in your notes in that table second what has happened in the rotterdam convention okay only two names you have to remember one is decabromo diphenyl ether one second is perfluorooctanic acid these will be subjected to a pic of course we know that rotterdam convention is about your pesticides and harmful chemicals right so these two have been added okay so the names deca bromo by the way why am i emphasizing on the names because in 2019 there was a cop in that forates were outlined and in the same year forates was asked by upsc as a question okay that forates etc and other compounds are in the news these are what so which is why just remember two names in rotterdam these are the most recent ones because after 2019 the next cop has happened in 2022 one is deca bromo diphenyl ether and the second is perfluorooctanoic acid and the last one is stockholm convention here you have to remember this 
पर फ्लोरो हेक्सेन सल्फोनिक एसिड ओके पर फ्लोरो हेक्सेन सल्फोनिक एसिड इज द परसिस्टेंट ऑर्गेनिक पोल्यूटेंट व्हिच इज आउटलाइंड इन द स्टॉकहोम कन्वेंशन दैट इज आल्सो समथिंग यू नीड टू नो अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट व्हाट यू नीड टू नो व्हाट आर द यूजेस ऑफ दीज कंपाउंड्स पर फ्लोरो हेक्सेन सल्फोनिक एसिड यूजेस आर दैट दीज आर स्टेन रेजिस्टेंट दीज आर यूज्ड एज स्टेन रेजिस्टेंट फैब्रिक्स इट इज यूज्ड इन फायर फाइटिंग फोम्स ओके एंड इट इज आल्सो यूज्ड इन फूड पैकेजिंग so one question can be what are the applications and second question can be where why was this thing in news okay in fact if you go to the unep website this is what they have outlined that one is that there is a decision on uh, e waste this we already know this is outlined in basel second a ban on harmful chemicals affecting fire fighters this is the exact image so that is what this that is related to this per fluoro sorry per, yeah per fluoro hexane sulfonic acid so please make sure you know that okay also in the un website and also in the whole summary in basel because basel talks about the pic for e waste they have again mentioned a term that is known as circular economy okay that if we are subjecting them to this all the e waste to this this is going to promote circular economy so again a simple question can be asked what is circular economy for that you need to know traditionally you have a linear economy linear economy simply means you have an input there is a process and finally you have an output this whole is a linear economy okay this is a linear chain of events in this of course a lot of wastage is there very less recycling is possible okay because let's say you use some of the inputs they are wasted not utilized and you have an output which is directly consumed again you have same set of inputs okay in circular economy what is the idea your raw material can be used in multiple let's say uh, cycle and whatever is the final product again is recycled again can be used as a raw material and again can be utilized so few benefits number one overall cost is less because the material can be utilized in various parts of the process one second high recyclability high recyclability means less waste generated less waste generated means better for the environment okay so circular economy again can be asked less raw material less waste and lesser emissions again remember in waste to energy i have told you five things okay if you don't remember it go back and see the first lecture on high yielding terminologies i have outlined for example pyrolysis fermentation biomethanation etc etc so read it circular economy very important because it is also mentioned in this part all right so now what should you do i have told you this brs so first of all you've written what is it and then write down recent update in basel write down e waste subject to pic all the e waste be it hazardous or not hazardous in rotterdam write down the name of those two chemicals and in stockholm one so in this small table all your information is condensed that's all what you need to know okay so that is how you can condense this information and this will become easy for you next is washington convention okay you might not you might know the other name sites is known as washington convention okay again one more thing here that unep united nations environment program serves as a secretariat for this washington convention this is related to see it's an international agreement okay multilateral treaty it is there this talks about trade of endangered species okay which can include plants which can include animals both okay so that is one you don't have to remember the year etc but then this is very important it talks about trade of wild animals and plant in the sense that the international trade does not put into their existence into a problem okay so it talks about sustainable means all right so that the th the existence is not threatened of these animals now one thing is it legally binding so yes sites or this washington convention is legally binding but it does not take place the national laws okay this exact thing was also asked by upsc so yes sites is legally binding you should know but it does not take place the national laws okay there are other related conventions and bodies related to sites that i'll cover separately in a high yielding topic of environmental organizations and bodies okay 
so that for example there is mike there is international other consortiums other crime wildlife crime related bodies all of that will be covered there separately okay now sites talks about three things one is legality sustainability and traceability okay legality of course see when we are talking of trade now you know there is an illegal wildlife trade which is also happening you will know that there are species like mammals like pangolins which are one of the world's most trafficked okay so one what we have to do which is why we also have wildlife protection act in fact if you see the first uh, like lecture on wildlife protection act in the high yielding topics which i have covered i spoke that the schedules have now been outlined in a manner so that we can implement sites properly so this ensures the legality part okay second is sustainability okay let's say if you are trading too many of these animals and plants that at some point of time it can become unsustainable so again this thing has to be taken care of and the last thing is traceability okay that you should be able to trace let's say you move 10 elephants or 10 tigers from india to let's say nepal or let's say africa so we should be able to trace it should not happen that we sent 10 animals they only got 5 five of them were smuggled or poached okay so all these things are taken care of and then it also has appendix in the same manner wildlife protection act as schedules appendix 1 2 and 3 okay so highest degree of protection etc is in appendix 1 and then as you move to appendix 2 and appendix 3 the degree of protection is lesser all right so that is also one thing that you need to understand about how these appendix and conventions have to go along this is washington Con uh, convention or the sites okay other things i'll cover specifically in the bodies lecture right next is bonn convention all right again many people get confused so number one thing i'll tell you there is a bonn summit okay there is a bonn convention and then there is a bonn challenge i already told you bonn challenge is related to the forest or let's say land based restoration okay this is land based restoration and it can include afforestation as well in this i have already told you the targets for india and the targets for the world okay so somebody can also comment that in the comment section bond summit is related to unf triple c okay this is actually cop number 23 in fact other name for bond summit is tala noa dialogue this was also asked by upsc tala da noa dialogue which is talking about climate change okay this is cop 23 all right and this is bond summit now we are concerned about bond convention bond convention is also known as convention for conservation of migratory species okay so this is about migratory species fine again here unep also serves in the secretariat so unep here serves as a secretariat again this is something you need to know apart from that it also has certain appendix in which the animals etc are graded so that is also one thing you need to be aware about okay and when i'm saying migratory species it will include terrestrial aquatic and avian avian means who can fly so all of this will be included here in the bon convention so if they ask you which kind of migratory species so yes terrestrial aquatic and avian all of this will be included here okay unep serves as a secretariat that is one thing fine now i told you there is appendix 1 and again appendix 2 is there appendix 1 means very high degree of protection these are at very high risk hence these are appendix in appendix 1 these are endangered species and then you have appendix 2 which has lesser degree of protection fine so this is how these bond convention goes about then cms cop 13 had happened this was happened in 2020 and just one thing in this 2020 you had great indian bustard as the mascot okay and in the same year there was a question on great indian bustard okay india was basically heading it and by the way india is going to be at its helm of affairs till the year 2023 okay so for 3 years india is going to be there so that is fine additionally cms and by the way this is cms for 13 the 14 okay the host of 14 basically 
is outlined that it is Uzbekistan. Okay, and this will be happening in October 2023. So there is a lot of time for that. So even that update I have just added here that the host of COP 14 will be Uzbekistan. Okay. One more thing I want to tell you is light pollution. Okay, uh, light pollution simply means that excessive use of artificial light. So not only artificial light impacts humans because again it is going to change melatonin. Melatonin is very important for circadian ry rhythms, for sleeping and waking up cycles and for even regulation of certain hormones. So now if that thing is changed, so not our waking time is affected. Same is the problem with migratory birds. Okay. So they will have some disorientation in the night times. Okay. They can also collide with the structures. Visibility is impacted. All right. There is a disruption to the internal clock. Okay. And long distance migration also is impacted. So yes, light pollution is a severe problem for these migratory birds and species as well. That is all you need to know here. Okay. This is with respect to the Bonn Convention. Okay. Minamata Convention. Here just remember Minamata Convention is on Mercury. Okay. And we already know that uh, a lot of fishes, etc. There is a problem of basic mercury pollution. Okay, so mercury is a heavy metal, and let's say if you have it, so mercury poisoning also happens in the subsequent species which eat those fishes. Okay, so that is a big problem. This convention talks about how to regulate it. Minamata is a place in Japan, just like Nagoya was also a place in Japan. All right. So this basically talks about mercury. This is very mercury specific. Okay. This is Minamata Convention. Again, one thing is International Whaling Convention. Okay, as the name suggests, it talks about how the whales, etc., can be properly conserved. So, talks about proper conservation of whale stocks. Okay, that is one. Okay, now till here it is fine. What you need to know that recently two countries have come out of it. One is Russia. Okay, and by the way, India is a member here. One is Russia and one is Japan. So these two countries have come out of the International Whaling Commission. Now what is going to be the outcome? The outcome is that when they are out of this convention, then they can go ahead and proceed with commercial whaling. Okay. And by the way, for Japan, you already know this, that Japan happens to have so many natural disasters. So they do need a sustainable source. And also the location of Japan, okay, very close to the two co the, the hot and cold ocean currents. Now you have to tell me in the comment section, what are the two ocean currents which meet, which make this a very sustainable fishing ground. Okay. Tell me the name of those two ocean currents. Okay. So recently Japan and Russia have, have decided to come out of it. Okay. And that will help them enable commercial fishing. This is International Whaling Commission. Then I'll tell you three basic things about ozone depletion. Okay. This is Vienna Convention. So I'll just write it here. 1985, you had Vienna Convention. Okay. 1987 was the very famous Montreal Protocol. Okay. And in 2016, there was a Kigali Agreement. So what has happened? See. I am talking of ozone depletion. Okay. Now, one thing you need to know what causes depletion of ozone. So, it is primarily chlorine based compounds. However, it can also be bromine based compounds. The good ozone, see ozone is of two types. One exists in the stratosphere. That is good ozone. In fact, 90% of the ozone is good ozone found in the stratosphere. Bad ozone is the one which is found in troposphere. That is around 10%. Okay, so why is it why is 90% good? Because it prevents us from the harmful UV rays of the sun. And why is 10% bad? Because it is both a greenhouse gas and it is also a pollutant. Okay. Right? So that is one. In fact, it is this 10% which also leads to formation of smog. Alright? So, first of all, you need to know this. Second, there are ozone depleting substances which can be chlorine based which can be bromine based okay they go up to the stratosphere they cause depletion of that ozone a hole is formed and because of that hole this uh, let's say sunlight is going to come 
and it will harm our us it can cause skin cancers it can cause various skin diseases this is the basic thing so number 1 vienna convention spoke about how to reduce these odds okay montreal protocol banned chlorofluorocarbons chlorofluorocarbons were primarily used as refrigerating agents in ac refrigerators it was also used in fire fighting foam etc etc so cfcs were banned and they were replaced with hydrofluorocarbons hfc not hcfc hcfc is hydrochlorofluorocarbons if it has chloro it will be ozone depleting so when you replace this it was found that yes hfc was not ozone depleting that was the good part but later on it was found that hfc causes global warming because hfc is a greenhouse gas which also should tell you both ozone depleting substances and greenhouse gases are separate entities okay so here chlorofluorocarbon was an ozone depleting it was replaced with hydrofluorocarbons this was not ozone depleting but it was causing global warming so in the kigali agreement what we had done in kigali we have tried to phase out i am not saying eliminate phase out hfcs almost 85% by 2047 okay there are separate targets for example for the western countries there are more strict targets for developing countries like india there are relatively relaxed targets but in general around 85% reduction in the hfc by the year 2047 okay so one is vienna convention there is montreal protocol 1987 and in 2016 you had a kigali agreement or a kigali amendment so many cases one question can be kigali amendment was an amendment to which protocol so the answer is it was an amendment to montreal protocol all right so even this thing is you, you need to know and this exact sequence will definitely help you aid your concept of understanding ozone depletion so vienna convention montreal protocol and kigali agreement is something you should definitely know then recently a cop cop 14 happened okay of ramsar convention don't remember the name of the cop but it led to something known as a wuhan declaration because this happened in wuhan china okay so one thing first of all ramsar convention is related to the management of wetlands okay and it talks about wise use now ramsar you might be already aware is a place in iran okay so in 1971 this convention happened okay for the very first time it talks about sustainable management of wetlands that is one this part also wuhan declaration talks about how people and the wetlands can come together and save wetlands so you can also get wuhan declaration is related to related to ramsar related to safe management of wetlands that is one and again recapping we have how many wetlands in india 75 okay second which is the state with the maximum wetland that is tamil nadu 14 wetlands followed by uttar pradesh that is 10 wetlands okay now i want you to spend some time map all the wetlands on a piece of like state wise now tell me how many states in india have zero wetlands no need to cram this take a piece of map this is how this will be very easy. like it will become very easy, easy for you see those 75 for example you don't have to mention all the 17 or all the 14 in the map but have a broad idea okay this is there this is there this is there so you will have a list of states which have zero wetlands so maybe this can be asked okay so do this this is my small homework for you and mention this in the comment section this is ramsar convention all right and then let us quickly recall what have all we have seen here this is a very good chart okay i've created so that you are able to understand things we start with the year 1971 1971 you have ramsar convention okay on wetlands and the most recent update is this wuhan declaration okay that is 1971 this talks about wetlands second 1972 what you had you had the stockholm conference you also had wildlife protection act stockholm conference led to unep united nations environment program now tell me what are the important reports of unep i have listed all the important reports in that high yielding topics on reports okay 1973 you have sites known as the washington convention we've already seen that okay again 10 years later on there was a review of stockholm conference in nairobi 
not that important but just okay 1985 vienna convention related to ozone depletion okay 1987 montreal protocol which talks about banning of chlorofluorocarbons replacing them with hydrofluorocarbons okay again in the year 1987 you had a brentland commission report which talks about uh sustainable development okay which was titled as our common future this happened in 1987 1992 of course the very famous we also saw rio summit which led to unfccc uncbd and unccd right even this is very important then 1997 kyoto protocol this was the cop 3 of unfccc 1998 rotterdam convention hazardous chemicals and pesticides now again tell me what is the recent update on rotterdam convention 2000 cartagena cartagena talks about simple bio safety of lmo and gmos living modified organisms and genetically modified organisms then 2001 stockholm stockholm this is talking about this is stockholm convention talks about persistent organic pollutant now tell me the name of the recent cop in which which particular let's say persistent organic pollutant has been named okay and tell me all the uses of it rio plus 10 happened in 2002 this happened in uh, sorry this 1992 happened in rio de janeiro this happened in south africa okay in johannesburg 2010 you have nagoya nagoya talks about access and benefit sharing this also we have discussed rio plus 20 again happened in rio de janeiro in brazil 2015 you had the famous paris agreement which talks about nationally determined contributions and it also speaks about the various ways in which we can mitigate climate change this is also known as cop 21 of unfccc all right and the last thing which you have to view also know is kigali agreement of 2016 okay which is an amendment to montreal protocol okay which is phasing out hydro fluorocarbons right so a simple chronology map that like this will help you consolidate your information this is the kind of way you you can also make your charts okay and this will help you consolidate many many informations okay we've done this for conventions and, and i'll also do this for the bodies as well and also initiatives because many of you are confused in reports i've already covered that second was conventions now this is covered third will be bodies and fourth will be all the important initiatives all right so that will help you quickly revise these things okay so we started our lecture with the basic rio summit i outlined these things for you then 15 cop of cbd ccd we have seen that we have what are brs conventions and please make this kind of a chart that will be helpful then we saw stockholm convention we also saw what is circular economy what is washington convention then what is bonn convention okay what is mina mata what is international whaling convention what is vienna what is montreal protocol what is kigali what is ramsa right and we saw the whole chronology all right now in case those of you who want to avail the prims crash course lecture covering all the aspects of environment in very good detail can avail the crash course and other subjects as well and this you will be given these very good set of very short concise comprehensive notes even this you can follow right so this brings me to the end of the first part of conventions in the second part we will exclusively be covering cop 27 okay so till then please keep revising i'll meet you soon thank you